All right, we're going to go over how you can check if your powder coating product is properly grounded. If you don't ground your surface or your product right, you won't get good transfer efficiency. You'll end up with a lot of wasted powder. You can have issues on second coat applications with what we call back ionization, which looks like small pops in the surface of the powder as you're applying it. That occurs because the, as the part becomes insulated from your first coat of powder, the second coat will become harder to find the grounded surface. So you really have to make sure your ground's solid so you don't have back ionization and so that you get good transfer efficiency and overall don't waste a lot of powder and get good results. Most of the time when we run into issues, powder coating in shops, it's generally and often related to an improper or poorly uh, done ground. So to give you an idea of what a poorly grounded part looks like, We'll take our grounding strap off of this and we'll shoot it as it is. I may have a slight ground. I'm actually going to test before I show you this, uh, the unit here with a poorly grounded surface. So this is a grounding tester. You can get these pretty in a variety of places. There's a cable on one end that you connect to something that you know is grounded. And then on the other end is the actual tester. So I'll go ahead and connect it. I know over here is a grounded surface. And then if I do, do use it on here, I'm not, I have hardly any ground as it is. Uh, OK would be a great ground. And then as you move up, that's kind of poor, less and less effectively grounded. So as you can see, I have a red light, which means I don't really have a ground at this point. So we'll go ahead and show you that, see what that looks like here. All right, so as you mentioned, this is a poorly grounded part. I'm going to go ahead and shoot uh, my Wagner unit here. This is with a pretty high KV. You'll notice I'm not going to get a lot of transfer. So you can see I'm, I'm blowing a lot around the part and then I'm not getting a lot of wrap around the back quite as much. So we'll go ahead and reground the part. What makes for a good ground is that you have conductivity between you and the earth. So that any charge can then be dissipated into the earth and be grounded. And that's where the term comes from. So in this case, certain things are conductive, certain things are not. Metal surfaces are, rubber isn't as conductive. So when you're wearing shoes, for example, you usually want to try to reduce the rubber sole on them or use a grounding strap so that they're able to be more conductive. So this booth is metal and it's secured into the earth uh, with some screws. So we've tested it. The booth itself is actually relatively grounded. We have a grounding cable here. Depending on what you're doing, other options for ground can be poles that go down in the earth. You can even do a grounding rod, which is actually drilled uh, below the surface and then inserted into the ground from there. Sometimes the floor can be insulating and create an a inability to achieve a good ground. But to use a grounding tester, you just have to be able to secure one end to a surface that you know is grounded. So in this case, we know this booth is a grounded booth. And then we have a grounding cable here. Uh, if you ever want to know what, again, if you're trying to find a way to ground something, you can use the tester. And you could use this on a pole that's going on the earth or something similar like that. Uh, and that way you can test what you might use for a ground. But knowing the, the boost grounded, now we have it connected to our part. So when I come over here and I use my ground tester, you see I have a green light. A green light means that this is a grounded part. So we'll go ahead and spray this now and show you the difference you get with a good ground when you're powder coating. Now you'll really see this result and benefit, especially if you're doing any sort of second coats, doing metallics where the material itself tends to have a little conductivity to it which is problematic and can hurt the ability of the powder to attract. But just to show you with this basic color here, so you can see how much quicker I was able to coat that before cons compared to before when we had a poor ground. You do get a little bit of a smoother coat. And then if I come in the back, I can do the same in the back. Uh, but the ground helps the powder to attract to it. So when you're powder coating, 
establishing a solid ground for wherever you do your powder work is one of the most critical priorities so you don't face back ionization, so you get the maximum transfer efficiency and so that you're actually safe as well. Uh, in the, not grounding a pro part properly can enable a, 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 star, a spark to be able to form between the gun and the part and create issues. So grounding is critical. That's how you can test a ground. Some of the common ways to find a ground or anything that's connected directly to the ground earth itself or implanted into the earth that's a metal that's conductive. So in this case our booth is. You may want to check your own booth using something that you know is a grounded surface so that you can determine uh, that your booth's able to be grounded. If you had a wood booth, for example, that wouldn't typically enable you to ground your part with your booth because your booth would be non-conductive. Those are some of the pr principles of grounding and how they apply for powder coating. Uh, thanks for watching and if you have questions on grounding or if a particular surface would work well to conduct for grounding, just leave it in the comments below. Thank you.